Welcome back to the pedagogy TLS. The subject before, I hope you are doing well. After receiving messages and emails, uh, I have decided to upload another video for the ECD pedagogy, uh, which is upcoming on the 6th March. So uh, firstly, uh, for those uh, teachers who appreciate and uh, I wrote the, their valuable comments, I really appreciate this is all about your feedback and this is all about your uh, response that I'm receiving. Thank you so much. Firstly, I'm trying my best to give you uh, useful content which help you in your uh, test. And uh, this is my wish that every teacher can get the uh, desired score. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm providing you some tips and uh, how to deal with your test, but that all your efforts and the time you are spending on the content that's most important than these videos. So in this uh, lesson, uh, I'll be talking about the uh, standard one child development and give you more links and uh, some more uh, bullet points, which is part of your uh, study guides. So I will discuss with you and I will give you some instructions and I'm sure it will help you a lot. So if you're new to the pedagogy TLS, please uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want more videos like that, please press the bell icon button. So let's see first your study guide that what is exactly uh, mentioned in your study guide, standard one and part two. So if you can see here, uh, this is the domain one that seeks to demonstrate understanding of child development and its influence on young children learning. So these are the, uh, the blood points I'll be discussing one by one. So I have already copied and uh, mentioned in my uh, PowerPoint. So let me share the PowerPoint first. So here it is. But before doing these bullet points, I have to tell you the child's development domains. In my previous video, I have already mentioned that the child uh, grow or develops in these uh, four domains, especially physically, cognitive, language, and social emotional development. If you are a parent, if you are a teacher, or I'll say there's a, uh, many uh, female teachers, they are teacher as well as, you know, mothers. They know very well that when there's a physical development in their child, they found the cognitive development, language development, and social, social emotional development. So the most of the things they run the travel fairly with the physical development. Now, what parents do, parents try to apply or comply those approaches as per the age level, as per the stage of the, uh, the child's development or age of the child development. For example, if a child is in an age of or a stage of the preschool and a parent or a teacher is expecting from uh, the child that he or she can speak properly or grammatically correct or pronounce the basic sounds correctly, that's impossible. You are expecting something forward which needs more time to develop. So it's too early to expect from the child who is at the preschool age and you're asking, you're expecting that they can pronounce properly. Some child can do because they are, uh, uh, we can say these are the gifted uh, students, okay? They have the special or they learn from there quickly from the sound or it depends on their growth hormones. So the physical development 
and the other domains of the child's development, they work perfectly. Now, in some uh, children, if they have the low physical development due to the, some health issues or something, then definitely it's affecting on the cognitive development. So what is the purpose of this? Uh, these domains? I have to tell you that so there's a lot of the questions which is based on the scenario. So we are not going to memorize all these things or the information that is mentioned in the books and the pedagogy. We need to use to understand there's a keywords, there's a, some a logical concept in order to identify which is the best and correct answer. So once you know that what is the connection between these uh, key domains in the child development, definitely you will easily understand the question as well as you know the recognized answer. Second thing, the ages and the stages, I have mentioned in my previous videos as well as you know, these are the five ages. Okay? So I have mentioned that you have to focus on the age, preschool age and school age. Because you will be assessed based on the curriculum. Newborn, infant, toddler, we are not talking about their health, okay, this time. But some signs can be possible, but examiner will not force you to do go the things you don't know about that. So they will be talking about what you are uh, experiencing in the classroom, what policies has been given to you according to ministries and other uh, stakeholders and schools. So you will be observed, judged based on the given policies, not out of that. So once you have the question, so you have to try to think, okay, that what exactly you do in the classroom. So it's not about that some things I'm doing in my classroom that's a different, and then you are doing this. That can be the teaching strategies, but we cannot go uh, uh, out of the way. So there is a, some standards and the benchmarks which have been set by the, uh, uh, what we call the school or another assessing body like a KHD addict and uh, a Niazik. So you have to be, uh, try to very clear the what is standards uh, they suggest and uh, uh, they bound you or they set the benchmarks in order to perform in the classroom. So these are the five. Uh, ages and stages that uh, you have to be very careful, which is the most important are preschool and school age, because you are experiencing at the school age, KG to grade level two. And these are the links which I will be uh, posting into the uh, description. So let's go now the first, these things, demonstrate understanding of the child's development and its influence on young children. So, now, basically, uh, after analyzing your study uh, guide, the most of the things are related with the curriculum. Either it's a standard one, either it's a standard two, either it's an assessment part or across the curriculum. They are correlated. So when we are talking about the child's development means we are focusing on the key domains. And what are these key domains? I have mentioned the physical domain, development, cognitive language, and social. How we have to demonstrate the knowledge? By applying the teaching strategies, right? We have to integrate these all these things into the curriculum. If it is a physical development, suppose if the child is in a KG, the teaching strategies will be different. When it developed physically into grade one, the child teaching strategies will be different. Curriculum will be different. Integration will be different. Activities will be different. If it is in grade two, similarly, you have to teach. Now, as a teacher, what is the school's policy? What is the, uh, what we call the stakeholders or assessment, uh, the external, uh, uh, body's policy in order to follow or to comply the teaching strategies. So we have the few documents, a few supplements, like from the KHD, they have their own standards from the Ministry of Education. 
we have standards from the Niazid. Similarly, other, if you are in Abu Dhabi, if you are in Sharjah or another uh, state, you have the different. Now, the ministry codes are the same. They have set the standards for them. For example, if you are a science teacher and you teach the grade one, now for the science teacher, teacher they have the NGSS standards. We have the history standards. No matter if you teach the uh, Indian curriculum, no matter uh, if you teach the uh, national curriculum, American curriculum or another curriculum. But there is a certain standards for each grade level, either from the school, from the ministry or from the club. You cannot go beyond that. Now, when you face the questions, you have to think carefully that what teaching our appropriate teaching strategies are good for grade one, KG and KG two. Even Bloom's taxonomy gonna help you a lot. So if you see these are uh, 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 bullet points, integrate knowledge of the stage. Knowledge of the stages. What are these stages? Preschool, school, or even adolescence, or even we can say that the middle school, but we are talking about the ECD, so we're gonna focus only to preschool and school. How are we gonna integrate this personal development into the teaching and learning? Through teaching strategies, right? You have to set the goals. You have to set uh, the Bloom's taxonomy action work properly. You have to set the activities according to the stage of the development. So you cannot expect a great KG child that you ask them to memorize the table two because it's not meeting the criteria. So the most of the questions are based on the scenario. So once you read the instruction, you have to read it carefully. So a stage, KG student, what will be the possible teaching strategy? Because you are the CD teacher, you should, oh, this is the possible one. What activities are the possible activities that you think that's meeting onto the KG level? So, second thing, integrate the knowledge of stages in the cognitive development. So, suppose, you know, if you're asking the child that you have to, uh, uh, from the blue taxonomy, okay, on the top, uh, what we call action verb, or you can ask them to uh, build. So a KG or grade to one child, okay, it's hard for them to build. So what are you gonna do? You are smoothly uh, uh, are stepping in or stepping forward into the next level. So how you are integrating these actions word into the teaching and learning that all will be embedded into your curriculum and it's based on your experiences. See, they are repeating the word experiences, experiences, learning experiences, learning experiences. What are the learning experiences? What did they practice into the classroom? So what do you think is the best strategy of them? So you have the school's policy, you have the school's curriculum and you know very well that what policies or what teaching strategies are the best for the uh, uh, each stage. Number three, integrate the knowledge of the learning differences between genders. Now differences between genders, boys and girls. What we do, attain an attainment and the progress, we analyze the data and we, at the end of the any summative test, we check that who is performing better. What is the difference between boys and girls? What are the, uh, you know, the, the stages of the development? What are the weaknesses? What are the strengths of these, uh, you know, these two groups? And based on that, you are planning your action. So you are also integrating that one these things that in the curriculum and you're teaching and learning that this is my goal and in the next level i'll be achieving this because you have already observed and assessed that the gender difference between through even through your activities your even activities is based on the age of the development so you have to check the cognitive 
you have to check the physical development. You have to check the language. A few more things. Integrate knowledge of cognitive difference between uh, children to, into teaching and learning. As I've mentioned, cognitive differences, strength and weaknesses. Some students are high level, some students are middle level, some students are low level. What do you do? How you integrate? So there will be different learning outcomes for each student. And step by step, you are leading them. If you are expecting that a low learning child will give you or which will perform based on the synthesizers and analysis, that's wrong. First, you have to go the stepwise from low order to middle order, then high order thinking. Okay. So how you are integrating these uh, things into your curriculum? What activities you are, how you are differentiating these things? The differentiation is the most important thing, okay? So I have a lesson for the differentiation. You can check, okay? And my uh, playlist one, it will help you a lot. Even I have a, uh, integration lessons in the curriculum uh, playlist as well as in the social uh, and uh, what we call in pedagogy, ECD pedagogy, as well as in moral education. Even there's an, uh, uh, I guess, in the uh, which pedagogy and playlist one as well as in. Now, if you see the these four uh, points, foster, 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 encourage the language development of children, social development of children, emotional development of children, cognitive development. When you are providing the environment, when you are setting the group activities, these all these things. In. Let the take students learning responsibility so you see that language social emotional and cognitive and physical development in every activity as a teacher you are fostering you are engaging the students in a way that they can develop in all domains so this is your practices so uh some students are the gifted students, some students are talent that you have to identify. How you are identified, that's, when, that's based on their activities. Also. You are the best observer in the classroom. So the purpose of the, the bullet points to share with you that the, there are, are some questions which are based on uh, a scenario in which the examiner is gonna ask you as a teacher, if you are in this uh, uh, situation, what you gonna do? So means the best practice as you can do. And uh, I've seen and there's a lot of questions like that. So if you think carefully, if you read them carefully, if you filter the uh, wrong answer, that will be very easy to identify and recognize the correct answer. The purpose of this lesson that while you're in the exams, there's a questions they will ask you that what you do, what you think which is the best practice in the classroom. And that's a very general uh, choice and most of the, the things are very easy. So I hope this will help you a lot. So while you are on the exam, be careful and check these things careful, read the questions careful, and what you practice in the classroom, that is the best uh, choice. So good luck for the exams. Please, uh, after the exam, share the questions with me. I have the WhatsApp number in the description, please. In the channel description, please, what type of the question you have faced, give me the topics, themes, okay, that then I can uh, prepare a lesson, another lesson for those teachers who are struggling. I'll be waiting for your response, quick response from after the test. Thank you so much. Stay blessed and stay connected.